STEM families, I'm Candace Lytle, the College and Career Counselor here at STEM School Highlands Ranch. Today we will be presenting the GPA game for all of our families and students to have a better understanding of the holistic college application process. I have a lovely assortment of faculty here to facilitate this exercise. And from, um, from here, basically what we'll do is we'll see how a student's GPA affects admissions, but also how the other things in their application affect whether or not they are accepted to the university. Move forward two spaces if you have taken an exceptionally strong academic program. Here at STEM School Highlands Ranch, we offer multiple advanced and AP coursework. We also allow students to take concurrent enrollment courses. In particular, CU Denver, a four-year university, would be considered an exceptionally strong academic program. Move up one space if you play the oboe or the viola. So colleges and universities have lots of special slots that they're trying to fill and it looks good to have a well-rounded student body. Athletic teams are a great example of this, but the less obvious, hard-to-find musicians for band and orchestra often can get scholarships or find places in a university because they play something like the oboe or the viola. If you clearly stated that this college was your first choice by making an early decision, application, and commitment, move up two spaces. So there are two types of admission um, applications. One is early action. Early action is something you can do to as many universities as you'd like. Early decision you can only do for one university. An early decision application is a binding application, meaning that you absolutely have to attend that university if you are accepted. I encourage students to do early application and to only do early decision if they have the funds and the ability to attend that university if accepted. If your intended major is psychology, pre-med, or engineering, step down one. So these majors are moving backwards because they are very popular and competitive majors for freshman applicants. If your intended major is Greek, step up two. In contrast, to the last one, many selective colleges have unique programs, older programs like Greek that they don't get a lot of applications for. So often students who apply for these more unusual majors have a higher chance of being admitted. If you do not know any of your teachers well and had trouble finding someone to write your college recommendation, move down two spaces. So throughout high school, it's so important to form positive relationships with teachers and faculty. When you ask for a recommendation, I will be uh, helping you facilitate asking um, the teachers for that by using your post-secondary planning packet. There are pieces in the post-secondary planning packet, in particular the resume, that can really help teachers write you a strong letter of recommendation. If when you typed your college essay, you forgot to change the name of the college you were applying to, move down four spaces. So how you choose to make a first impression is so important and really counts with colleges. Um, this is also true with things like social media. You want to be really careful with the impression that you have on your social media sites. But if you're writing an essay um, for somewhere like CU Boulder, and you're talking about how bad you want to go to CU Denver or CSU, that doesn't look great. So make sure that you're proofreading your essays, that you have others proofread your essays before you send them off. If you are a legacy, move up two points. There are lots of institutions that give special consideration to legacy status for a variety of reasons, but they often um, like to see families continuing to offer financial support. This uh, is something that you will see happen more at the private institutions than the public institutions, but always select if you are a legacy if that question is asked on your application. If you did not write the optional essay for your college application, move down one spot. 
So colleges are looking for enthusiastic students. They're looking for students that go above and beyond. To me, if something is optional, I say it's mandatory. The more information that the colleges have, the more they, um, criteria they have to review who you are, what you're into, the better. So if you're able to write those optional essays to really make yourself stand out, I highly suggest it. If the topic of your college essay was what I learned from playing sports, move down one spot. It's perfectly OK and perfectly acceptable to write about sports. However, you want to make sure that you have a unique and unusual voice in your college essay. Some college essay topics are so common that it's very difficult, although not impossible, to write a unique and interesting essay. The most obvious topic might not always be the best. And in your senior year class, we will be doing some essay writing exercises. Also, I have lots of resources on my website related to finding the right essay topic. If you wrote the essay of the year, the one that was passed around the entire admissions office because it was so remarkable, move up three spaces. So being a strong communicator, being a strong writer can really help you in the holistic admissions process. Again, it's so important to have others read your essay and give you feedback. If you write the strongest one, you'll definitely stand out. If you plagiarized an AP American history paper and you got caught, sit down, you're out of the competition entirely. So this is a very serious infraction to colleges. They do not want students who are cheating or being academically dishonest um, at their university. Nearly every institution would understand um, you know, disciplinary minor infractions, but this is a major infraction, an AP course. Academic dishonesty has to be reported whenever I fill out the college piece of the application, or the college counseling piece of the application. I have to look over your, um, your records, and if I see any indication of academic dishonesty, I have to report it. Also, I would strongly suggest that you don't brag about cheating your way up or to improve your GPA because I have seen a student lose their admissions office or their, lose their admissions offer for posting that they cheated their way through high school. So be, don't cheat. And if you um, are posting or sharing anything about who you are academically, make sure that it is positive and nothing about academic dishonesty. If you will be the first person in your family to attend college, move up two spaces. Almost all colleges and universities reward students who have overcome factors that make them less likely to pursue a college education. Another good example of this is English as a second language learner applicants. Also, there's lots of scholarships available for first generation college students. If you participated in an enriching summer program between your junior and senior years, move up two spaces. What you do your last semester of your junior year and the summer before your senior year is the last thing that these college admissions officers will see when they're reviewing your application. So taking advantage of your summer getting an internship, doing some sort of special academic program, doing in-depth volunteering, all of those things look great on a college application. If you have participated in no extracurricular activities, move down three spaces. The most selective colleges are looking to build well-balanced and interesting freshman classes. So if only academic performance was what they considered, then the students would never leave the library. So it's a good um, indicator that a student is well-rounded, that a student will continue to participate in extracurricular activities if they've done so in high school. It also looks really good to hold a leadership position in any of the extracurricular activities you participate in. If you have participated in a significant community service project, move up one space. Colleges are always looking for students who are willing to give time and energy to others. When it comes to community service project, I'm not just talking about the community service hours required for graduation. These are students going above and beyond that requirement. If you are an Eagle Scout or a Gold Scout, move up two places. 
So attaining the rank of Eagle Scout or Gold Scout requires a long and consistent commitment to a goal, strong demonstration of leadership skills. So something like an Eagle Scout that not very many students get really, really stands out on an application. If you are a varsity athlete, move up two spaces. And if you are the varsity ap athlete that took second place at regionals, you get to move up an additional space. So fielding strong teams is important to visibility, recruitment, alumni support, among other factors. Many colleges and universities recruit athletes, not just Division I schools, even at a college that does not offer athletic scholarships, athletic, participa athletic participation may provide that value added. If you got a D in your academic course at the end of your junior year, move down three spaces. So again, colleges are looking for students to increase the rigor of their coursework from freshman to senior year. They're also really looking at that last semester of your junior year. That's the last semester of grades they have. So if you made a D or your GPA sank that last semester of your junior year, it can hurt your chances of admission. If you came to the college information session at STEM and introduced yourself to the college represent representative, move up one space. In the case of the 3.3, the student who made a D, it's great if they can explain the extenuating circumstances, maybe why they made a D, what they're doing to make sure that they bring up that GPA to the college admissions officer. Forming relationships with college admissions officers can be incredibly helpful. Those are typically the people that are reviewing your application and making a decision as to whether or not you're admitted. If you're a resident of Idaho, move up three spaces. So this is a strange one, but Sometimes there are factors that are out of our control. In a state like Idaho, there aren't a lot of students who are applying to go out of state. It could be something like your geographic location, being in a specific demographic, uh, diversity, gender, ethnicity, religion, race, all of those things can play into whether or not a student is accepted. These are things that are beyond our control, but we should be aware that sometimes they do factor into whether or not students are accepted to universities. If you never gave your counselor your post-secondary planning packet or any personal information to use to write your college recommendation letter, move down one space. So as a junior, you will fill out your post-secondary planning packet. In this packet, you will include your resume and answer questions about your goals, your ambitions, what types of colleges you're looking at, and some things about your character. All of these things help me, Ms. Lytle, your college and career counselor, write a strong letter of recommendation on your behalf. If your last name is on the college library, and it's not a coincidence, move all the way to the front and stay there. <laughs> so it is funny, true, however, sometimes there are, again, circumstances that are beyond our control, and there are situations where students are admitted to universities because they're a legacy or because parents or families have donated a lot of money to that university. I think it's really important to notice that me, as the college admissions counselor, there are nine people here. In this scenario, I'm only able to accept the top three, which if you look at the top three, that's a 3.2, a 3.6, and a 3.5. Our 4.0 did not get accepted. So the purpose of this game is to show students that it's not just about the GPA. There are so many other factors that go into whether or not you're admitted. What you write in your college essay, the relationships that you form with your letter of recommendation writers, how you spend your time in extracurricular activities and volunteerism, and the type of coursework you take, if you're taking those opportunities for AP, CE, really taking advantage of all the things we have to offer here at STEM, it can determine whether or not you're admitted to your university.